Ting, ting, ting. Okay, we live. Uh, let's wait. I need to prepare everything for recording. Almost ready. Three, two, one. Let's go. Hello, hello everyone and welcome to the Non-Intuitive Beats podcast episode number... Okay, next time I will be ready with a number. Next time I will be ready, I promise. Brought to you by the Leaders Club, that is usually your part if you're listening to us. But do consider elevating your membership by joining our Discord channel. And it's usually today with me in the virtual studio. We had Mitri Mananigo say hi to people. Hello, happy Friday. Oh, yes, it is Friday indeed. And as usually the most annoying voice that you're hearing right now would be me, Slava Kovalevsky. And with that said, we have two people who just joined us. Hello, people. Oh, my friend, how was your week? Let me find the window where I see you. Yeah, it was actually pretty good. Nothing really. It's my first working week after a long paternity. Ah, so how do you feel? Yeah, it's fine. Like, uh, visit the office, talk to people. It's... Um, I, luckily, like, um, in my life, I had experience when I have almost six months of not working, mm-hmm. and not even doing anything related to coding or anything. Mm-hmm. Getting back, back was super hard. I, I feel like my brain just didn't work. Uh, but this time, like, I knew this, this problem. So for all four months, I have my own project, have uh, things to do. So at least I, I get... Um, somehow prepared as she were mentally ready ready yeah. to start writing again okay okay uh you know just uh, for the starting warm-up i wanted to share two interesting things one is about um, the new scum that i recently have encountered in the wild i'm pretty sure you getting tons of the email that says you got the new airdrop You got the new crypto NFT and you just need to redeem it here. Funny, but no. No, okay, check your spam folder. (laughs) I'm sure that's (laughs) it. Why? (laughs) Check spam folder. (laughs) Oh, I actually checking spam folder for the exactly cases that I'm going to discuss. uh, Because uh, time to time in the spam folder, you finding some interesting threads of how they trying to scam people these days. And um, I found an interesting new way to have they doing so. They uh, obviously people no longer buying the idea that you have an FT drop, that you have some drops, or you want some tokens or coins or whatever. No one looks like buying it the shit anymore. So what they're doing these days, they uh, crafting personal emails. I got the email that state that look, you got the airdrop, blah. They have like all links that support their narrative. And uh, they stating that because so many people uh, do not believe that this is real, many people have not claimed this airdrop, and we would be willing to buy it from you. So they pretending as they are like some other third party company that mm-hmm. going to the people who got the particular airdrop and buying this airdrop. Uh, Wait, okay, now I'm like, when it said airdrop, I, I thought like macOS airdrop with files. But oh, no, 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 no. So in, in the crypto world, uh, the airdrops, they are uh, meant like um, a lot of the project to popularize themselves. They might be giving away either NFT or their tokens for free if you do something. So this uh, actually stimulates the community because if you are creating your own new token or cryptocurrency and you literally giving for free part of this currency, the people will have incentives to promote it with you. Mm-hmm. So the higher price goes. So the airdrop is very popular things, but obviously so do as scammers that are trying to use it. Usually they will try to, um, the idea that to get airdrop because it's a crypto asset, you need to connect your wallet and you need to sign the procedure of getting the airdrop. And this is where quite often scam uh, uh, come into play because uh, for people who 
just got into the crypto, if they don't understand what they are uh, clicking uh, approve to, you can easily uh, ask the transaction to move Bitcoins from their account somewhere. Uh, okay. And if they click approve, they effectively are allowing to move yeah. Bitcoin from their wallet somewhere else. Interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Regarding mail spam, not really about Bitcoins, um, but I found really useful feature in Fastmail. Essentially, uh, now for every website or every person I give, especially like, you know, like commerce, like I give them a unique email in a, which usually looks like name of a company at and then my third level domain. So now I know exactly like who is writing to me, who leaked my email, and most of all, I can just like very easily, you know, like ban it. Okay, just like for this, like, you know, best buy at something, just mm -hmm. go to spam. This is really uh, helpful. It does require you owning domain uh, and Obviously, you can do it yourself, but I found Fastmail is like working fine by, for me. And I forgot, I think you told me, uh, but I really forgot, is it compatible with Calendar, Google Calendar or not? Um, so I do get invites, but they don't work. I think I still need to figure out like how, because I think there's no exchange between Fastmail Calendar and Google Calendar, just mm. if you have like any other CalDAV extension, which is me. Got it. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Anyway, I'm I'm for now super happy with my Gmail subscription, especially they, they now added uh, Gemini there. Uh, so yes, yes, uh, you think that. You know, when you mention a unique... That's email, until mm -hmm. you ask Gemini some questions, they decided that you're a bad person and ban you. <laughs> that's only if you don't pay them. They don't do this if you do pay them. <laughs> so, um, now, on this specific feature that you mentioned, unique email, right? Unique email that you're getting. Uh, Robinhood, and I promise it's actually connected to what I just said. Robinhood just released a new credit card. And like a unique credit card for each payment? Uh, for each what? Okay, you, you just tell what it is. <laughs> okay, so this is just a new credit card that Robinhood just released nothing um, kind of unique uh, this is they call it gold card but there is two things that they, they did right and honestly it feels like Apple card done the way that you would expect it to be done for example what do you mean? Uh, yes two things one three percent cash back on everything no bullshit. Okay. No, like only in particular place and only if using CarPlay, 3% period. Um, and this is amazing. Honestly, I don't know. The only thing that gives better is uh, um, a points card, but they give you only points that you can spend on only particular things. But yes, point wise, they might give you more than 3%. Now, the second thing that they did right, uh, you know how in Apple card you have the virtual card number. Yeah, but it's only one. Exactly, yes. Everyone would expect it to be like with your uh, story with Fastmail. You have a card per service. They're doing exactly this. I think there are companies who did it before. It uh, wasn't very popular. But yeah, it's it's very surprising that Apple haven't done it this way. Especially for all kind of subscriptions. Yeah, um, yeah I agree. Who except the, the, the Apple actually could have done this in the right way and this guy doing it. so it feels like this is an apple card done right it's even metal so it's even metal card so you know you you will not miss your apple card much i'm trying to very quickly find oh yeah privacy.com uh there is this domain i wonder oh, yeah, how much it's mm -hmm. also came to my mind mind one that creates like this uh, virtual cards Yep, so privacy.com is exactly that, that service. Um, and I was already looking into them and then I learned about Robinhood. So now I am on the waiting list. I don't think they gave me access just yet, uh, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, I probably will need to figure out which credit card to kill because I have too many of them by now. I actually even have one that I not bothering to close, but it's there. And I don't know what to do about it. Do you have the same weird parts? Mm -hmm. They contribute to your credit line and technically affects your um, your score in a good way if you have more credit line. That is true. But what bothers me that you know it's it's credit card that has uh, some let's say meaningful size of the credit, 
And uh, what if someone will steal that card and I will not find out because really I don't give a shit about that specific yeah, card because sure. I don't use it. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's double edged sword. I uh, yeah. Anyway, let's open the topics. Uh, do you have anything else, my friend, from the small topics to start before we'll jump to several bigger? No, I have something to, to keep till the end. Okay, okay. So, one of the big topics I wanted to discuss today is uh, self-driving industry. I have an uh, updated look on this industry. industry so, so have some speak. insights. Nah, not that much. <laughs> not that much of the insight. If you, uh, if you're asking when we will st restart driving again, uh, I can't say anything. I don't know anything. So no, not much of the insights. Um, but it's not a secret that IT industry in the crisis and everyone was was kind of trying to guess what will help us to overcome this crisis. Last time when the crisis was here, the the the, the vehicle that saved us was the app industry. And honestly, I was thinking for quite some time that this time the savior might be LLMs and ChatGPTs and the industry building around those. And suddenly I realized that much bigger things already boiling under, the, under, un, under my nose in the Bay Area. And this is self-driving cars. But what I mean meant by this, uh, everyone looking on the L4 driving companies, which is probably Zooks, Cruise and Waymo. Like that's, that's really it. And uh, to be fair, Cruise Cruz not closed, Cruise going back on the road. So from that perspective, Cruise also doing well, Waymo doing well, Zooks doing well. But there is not that many other players. But if you look on the classical car manufacturer, mm -hmm. you'll find that all of them suddenly have realized that self-driving is happening. It's no longer something that you can avoid. It's actually happening, but it's happening in different waves. Like you need to have some capability of self-driving uh, already and slowly develop it to be ready for the future. Mm -hmm. And I started researching this topic and I found tons of the startup, obviously all of them in the, in the Silicon Valley or US, but mostly in Silicon Valley, that already partnering with different classical manufacturers, they are well funded and they're actually growing exponentially right now. In this current market, they're literally growing exponentially. Just several quick examples, Helm AI, uh, partnering with Honda, I'm sure they have way more customers, this is just uh, what they have disclosed. Uh, Sensigo, uh, partnering with Porsche, uh, applying That's into e interesting because mm -hmm. I remember GM was kind of reducing their cr super cruise. So what they have? Oh, I'm wrong. Uh, you are correct in the sense that they have um, Ultra Cruise, which was a future system, and they reduced something to something. So they never released it, <laughs> so to speak. And uh, no, but yes. By the way, even though the name is Cruise, that's a different Cruise. It's a completely different team inside of those. So yes, mm -hmm. they're reducing the scope of it. That was a public information to something else. But nevertheless, this is still happening. Uh, no one um, shutting down or cutting the self-driving level two and three for the cars. In fact, everyone going all in to some extent. At this point, almost all companies either already invested of the startup or investing. By the way, even Uber. I was surprised to find out that Aurora Tech, one of the big self-driving startups, 26% of these guys owned by Uber. Oh yeah, because um, I don't remember which were exactly, but Uber has this ATG, uh, Advanced uh, Technology Group, that was developing Uber own self-driving years ago, and they sold technology to Aurora, or not, mm -hmm. them. there was some business thing. That's why it's like big chunk of Uber there. Um, yes, yes, and uh, I, I knew the story, I didn't know that they own it, because I thought they won't out completely, it turns out no, they're still exposed to this market. Yeah, uh, I think it's more about like, it's like, the deal was huge and Aurora just didn't have money. <laughs> I think Uber would happily just say, okay, just buy everything, but... It is money. Yeah. Makes sense, makes sense. Um, okay, let's continue with the list, applied intuition. Uh, according to them, Toyota, Nissan, Volkswagen. I know many things, many uh, what I cannot say about many of these companies, what I do know, but what I can share that many of them has way more customers that they can admit on the website. 
but pretty much we already have a pretty exhausted at least motional uh, this is the one that works with Hyundai mm. then we have an agricultural field uh, there is many construction of uh, heavy equipment that actually also want and need cell driving. In fact, there, uh, they even working with the government to make sure that the government will step in and start telling which part of cell driving you absolutely must have. Because there, they're introducing it not as much for helping you to drive, but as an additional helper that would prevent casualties. Like if it sees a human, it will auto brake, auto steer in some cases. Uh, so things like that. And this whole transformation have happened after majority of the players realize that L4 Plus requires tons of the money and really there will be only few players there. But you can focus on L2, L2, L3. And many of the startups who do was trying to jump into L4 Plus directly, they have died. Probably again, Zook, Screws and Vaming, the only one that persevere and looks like it actually happening. But the rest just switched on L2 and 3. And we as the consumers have heard many of the news of uh, startups popping up. But again, those are the startups that were focusing on L4 specifically. And yes, many of them have died, but majority are flourishing. They, they're growing like crazy. Yeah, I, I think, uh, I mean, I'm driving with Tesla, like full self-driving for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think like over like next five, 10 years, this feature would be pretty much not like mandatory in every car, but it would be like, you know, oh, my car has a, I don't know, a backup camera or my car has a, I don't know, like a heated seats, you know, like something that, okay, some cheap cars won't have it, but if you buy anything that not even luxury, but like a medium, medium class, like, but high trim, it should be supposed to have it. Like everyone would expect like, oh, why at least most of the car already have, uh, like cruise, like almost all have cruise control, you know, like keeping mm -hmm. many cars has a distance, like, like uh, smart cruise control, like distance to the next car. Some cars now have line changes. So I would assume at least like automatic line changes would be almost everywhere but probably even more things especially on the highways or especially in traffic jams 100 percent. and to, to be fair i think in europe adaptive cruise control that also capable of uh, uh, looking at the distance is a mandatory thing uh it is it's a nice safety feature from their perspective in us or oh, in us i don't think even even abs is mandatory because i still can go and buy a car I don't think they manufacturing car. Oh yes, but they do manufacture motorcycles. Motorcycles without ABS. So yes, you legally allow to sell vehicles without ABS in US. But even motorcycles, right? Like when you go and buy, like many of them already equipped with ABS. Oh. Uh, motorcycles, true. But what I'm saying, just from perspective of the law. Oh yeah, it's not required by law. Now, the interesting part that. If everyone have moved to L2 and 3 focus, if you shift this focus, that actually allows you to move much faster uh, and much simpler because you are no longer focusing on tons of the tail events. You now have a still human driver behind the steering wheel that legally responsible. So you actually need to make it good enough. You don't have to make it perfect. And what I mean by this, if you applying, uh, if you're doing uh, simple, See, the most simplest model uh, for some of the EOM, you can apply many interesting, interesting solutions like um, one friend of mine from heavy manufacturing industry, uh, as I mentioned, who are trying to make this for the sake of safety, not for the helping the drivers mentioned that they're using a mono camera. They're using just one camera for the sake of figuring out the distance. I don't know about Tesla, if they having two cameras, I think they have two, uh, but I may be wrong. And the interesting thing that um, theoretically on one side, you cannot get the distance with just one camera, theoretically. On practice, you can build a model that will predict distance fairly, fairly accurate because the model can see the object and the model can derive size of the objects from the past knowledge and then derive the proportion of this object. So yeah, technically, if you mm -hmm. move, like if your car is moving, you can derive size of other objects. Mm, you don't have to have movement. That's, that's the story. You, you literally can train the model 
So the way how it's, uh, obviously, it's not going to give a precise distance, but the way how it will work, you as a human being and the model as well, it can guess the size of the car in front. And ah, then... Okay. So it's like, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a particular model. But I'm saying you can get, get even more precise, right? Like if you if your car is moving, can you know your speed? You can technically also check size of the car. Yes, uh, that is true. Uh, but um, so now I'm coming back of the training specifically. So the simplest way to have data that is labeled somehow and then trained. One of, do, of doing so, you're putting LiDAR that actually checks the distance to particular object and the cameras that record them. And then per picture you will have, here is a distance to the object for this particular field on the picture. Here is the picture. And then you can train it. Uh, what you're saying requires introducing slightly more high-level concept that will fuse several oh, yeah. uh, several pictures together. So theoretically, this fusing will give more data and it should work even more accurate. But I do believe that even per picture training, we're saying here is LiDAR data, here is a picture, here is LiDAR data, here is a picture, will already produce a very accurate distance measurement model. That yeah. I think for level three, it's fine because you still have a user in case like car, uh, you know, met something really, really, you know, unknown. Yeah, and, and on top of that, um, for the training, you can use this combo, but for production, you always can put sonar or, or radar that is much cheaper that can go in the car and can give you some sense of security for double checking what your uh, distance measurement from the, from the perspe perception uh, stack tells you. So yeah, it's, there is so many things that we already have learned and can do faster. And the nice part, you know, I remember this back in the day when there was like 2012, 2011, when the new clouds were popping out, DigitalOcean, um, Azure, Google Cloud. Uh, many of the new clouds were popping up and growing faster because of humanity and the whole have built expertise. They hired tons of the people who did it in the past. They knew the best practices, how to do things, how not to do things. And they were able to rebuild the whole industry. I actually witnessing the same thing in AV industry. Many of the startup that, that, that uh, popped, so to speak, they created tons of the experts that now going to this second wave of the startup that we just discussed and rebuilding stuff, knowing best practices. What have took the industry 10 years, now taking one year one and a half mm -hmm. and um it, it feels like indeed we are in this moment where the whole bay area in the five years from now might be uh half of the big companies are self-driving cars companies <laughs> i can easily see that but we'll see obviously plus it may also work to attract investors because right now everyone like oh ai is a hot topic so car investors may do the same right like oh we're also doing ai please give us money <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you're right. Um, I also see the, the attractive part from the investors, everyone doing hardware, because everyone suddenly realized that you cannot get a lot of returns from the company that building wrapper on top of LLM. That's no longer survive long. It's, uh, you know, you, you, you cannot have an exponential growth. So everyone starts putting money into the hardware startups, crazy hardware startups. And this feels like it almost guarantees return to, um, to investors. So yes, I'm sure that uh, investing is also can be secured fairly easily for these types of companies. Anyway, this is the future. And by the way, if you are, uh, uh, if you are outside of uh, Bay Area, you probably might not uh, have a good understanding how real everything is. In a sense that in San Francisco, I don't remember where last time I took non-self-driving car as a taxi. And I'm not sure why I should. It's an amazing experience. It is a reality. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's not something because I'm hearing tons of the talk, oh, it might be happening or might be not. There are so many things that the industry need to figure out. No, the industry already have figured out this for some of the cities. It's real there. And I'm pretty sure in several years from now, it will become so normal uh, that people you know, forget that there was something else in the special geographical regions. Sure, not for the whole globe. For that, we need a little bit more time. 
anyway 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 and by the way uh, i frequently calling my uber uh, my way most through the uber uh, mm -hmm. so it's a really really nice partnership over there thank you Sherlock, for your contribution into my salary <laughs> I, yeah, that's actually a very true statement. <laughs> uh, um, okay, that's all I wanted to... Um, oh, no, 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 no. One more thing. And um, the biggest problems in this industry that actually I wanted to, to, to mention, we, there is already enough influx of the people with the expertise on the market, again, in the Bay Area. But the biggest problem there is just pure engineering how to build proper CI-CD system, how to build system that will be finding the available GPUs on the market. And if the GPUs are available, how you will make sure that we're balancing cost of moving data close to GPUs where you do do training versus waiting for the training and GPU available where data resides now. So things like that, like pure engineering, that's the biggest bottleneck right now. Uh, no longer the research, no longer finding the people with the right skill set is just literally making shit work. But is it also boiling down to like not enough C GPUs for everyone? It's like GPUs are too costly. Um, yes, with asterisks. Okay. In, in the sense that uh, people, let me put it this way. If you're the startup and you would be willing to buy GPUs, there is absolutely no problem for you to secure GPUs and build your data center with it. Yeah, but they like cost a lot. Yes, but again, there is not a problem for you to do it. But people don't do it because they want to have a cheaper capacity through the clouds. So they will not have to do to building their own data center for many, many reasons. So. And when we're speaking for this model, yes, there is not enough GPU for everyone. But again, this is because people want to rent GPUs. They don't want to own GPUs. If the people would be willing to own GPUs, it's it's actually not a problem. There is not that much of the shortage of buying GPUs if you want to buy them right now. You can go on Amazon and <laughs> literally purchase A100 and, you know, there <laughs> they used to be a case, I think two years ago, there used to be a case when you go on Amazon, there would be nothing there, like literally nothing. But yeah, that's all gone now. Um, okay, let's go to films. Let's let's go to something lighter than, <laughs> than the car that's all driving. Um, we have seven people listening to us. Uh, there was more actually, but they left. Looks like people hate self driving. So let's move on to the other topic. <laughs> I, I see you mentioned the three body problem. Is it like about Netflix TV show mm -hmm. released? Oh, wait, did you start watching it? Because I already watched like half of it, I think. Uh, I watched uh, three episodes by now. Okay. So do you like it? Um, first of all, keep in mind that uh, I have not read the book. I think it's by the book, I guess. Yep. Um, I haven't read the book, so I don't know uh, many things that people complain about. And without that, it feels, yeah, it feels very, very good show. I would highly recommend to watch it. Yeah, I actually read the book and I, I can understand why people complaining, but I think people just like to complain about, you know, oh, it's not like in a book. But for me, like books are very hard to make right for TV show. The pace of books very different, the time scale, um, the characters, you know, like books, like first book, more local, shows like some events. And then second, so just like jumps across time and like with a few characters only. Um, and I think it's like very hard to do book properly. And I see how they, they did like a few tricks. First, it looks like they merged two characters into one. Hmm. It's not yet uh, it's not yet clear. Like it will be clear like in the future episodes if they make like maybe uh, second season. Mm -hmm. But I feel they try. Plus they introduced more connections between characters because in books it was like you know like you read House's book and say oh it's a new character let's bring him in you know like random almost randomly. But in a TV show they try to introduce everything from the start but in a natural way not just like okay we just show one location with one person then completely different they show this is actually like relative or their friends or their colleagues so they do some of these like shuffles and they also try to add more um i would say tension between people by adding like extra relationships 
because in the book they were there. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's like pretty good job if you say, okay, we're not making TV show like like one by one to book, but trying to keep a spirit, keep a main plot, keep like ideas, but try to make it more like, you know, easy to digest as a TV series. I think they're doing a really good job. Because like, I think the opposite was Foundation series from Apple TV. Because Foundation's book also very hard to, you know, to make. And I would say the only way to make a TV show from Foundation books would be like to completely ditch like old plot and just make like, you know, maybe <laughs> set one. up, maybe some like lines and just like say, okay, it's not really a, on a book. It's just like, like getting some ideas. But Foundation TV says, say, okay, no, we're making book. And then they screw up because you can't really make it one, one to one. No. Uh, makes sense. And um, what I wanted to ask about this, Oh, actually, just just share my access and the uh, angle on this. But before doing so, would you recommend reading the book? Um, I mean, for people who like science fiction, I think first book is really good. Uh, I think there's an element of surprise. They, they also kept it in a TV show. I don't know, like you, you watch like three episodes. I think it's uh, you still don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and book also keeps you like almost two half. Do you read like it's very interesting? It's very but you still don't understand like what's going on, like why it's all happened. Just in the end of the book, you understand like everything, why it's happening, like what's going on. Um, but initially, no. So books really having this, I don't know, like if you already watch TV series, would it be a nice. Um, and also book structure, the first book again, is like very local. It shows like some period, mm -hmm. but second or third books, they more like a chronics of like much larger journey with like some characters are preserved, some are new. Um, so yeah, I enjoy books. I think it's really good one. But for people who don't in, not into science fiction, I think like there are better science fiction books. I see, I see, I see. Uh, that makes sense. And uh, uh, this remind me the Andrews game books. They structure it also the the, the the scale of the story went exponentially bigger with mm -hmm. each next book. Um, yeah, I think one really good example of like scaling its expense series is like nine books, which is crazy. But after did really good job, you know, like keeping pace of each book similar to previous one. Mm. So there, there's no feel like, oh, now you show like local and now just everything blows up. It's like very like stepping. But, you know, uh, two things I want to mention uh, that uh, resonates with me. First of all, this is a really good show. I like it so far. I, I probably at the half of that show. A, a lot of people complain about the agenda, walk agenda, or diversity agenda, or whatever the uh, DAB agenda was there. And for me, at least I'm in the half of the show, so I don't know the future. But for the first half, if there is an agenda there, it's uh, done in the in the right way because I don't see it. Yeah, I mean because even book like shows characters from like it's like book explains like global problem. So there are like people literally over like over all the world. So I don't know. Like I think that people complain because one of characters is actually gender swap. Like it was like a guy in a book, mm -hmm. a girl in a TV shows. But I'm like, it feels like they actually merge like two characters, like male and female from books. Again, as, as I suspected, and we'll see it in the future. But it looks like it, and it's actually a really interesting move how they can achieve it, and it makes sense because books feels weird because first book mostly about guy, mm -hmm. and second is sort about girl. So it's it's kind of like strange that like it's not like a new character every book but if they keep one character and you get into like uh your story would be pretty cool uh i'm trying to i was trying to find the this uh, the specific pointers but i think it was from elon musk and people retweeted it that oh there is some some agenda here maybe i don't know if it is, I think this is a good example that if you're doing the good movie, the movie is <laughs> really good and no one cares about the actual agenda. The yeah. problem with agenda when it's bad. Problem with the bad movies, right? Like, yeah. Like, these days it could be agenda, like 20 years ago it could be Uwe Ball trying to clean up someone's taxes by bad movies, you know, like it's... There are different reasons, we just don't like bad movies. That was 20 years ago and 10 years ago it was 3D. <laughs> 3D would be a bad movie. They would oh, try. Yeah. To, yes, you just don't like 3D. That's yeah. your problem. <laughs> the movie is amazing. And the second part. Uh, so 
again, this is Netflix, you can tell, in a sense that it feels like Netflix have a special committee that will decide level of uh, idioc- idiosyncratics of watcher uh, of people who watch and then would tune okay. stuff so uh, just just to give you some examples right remember where they start playing together the game mm-hmm. they didn't explain how it just it just happened they tried it just worked mm-hmm. and cases like for example if you remember where they won the game by figuring out that you just need to and sorry there will be a minor spoiler here they Actually, I will try without the spoilers. Remember where they won the level four of the game uh, mm-hmm. by saying what the problem that yep. they need to solve. This was a clear, I forgot how it called, when you vocalizing stuff to explain to the listener. Like yeah, they had- yeah, you, you have to. Um, but they also do like, I seen like they cut some things, which is, I'm not sure because, again, I'm not spoiling and you haven't seen this part. But there was a scene in a book, mm-hmm. mm, like action scene, let's say, called. In a book, it was very complex. And book actually do this, like it explains like, oh, character seen something in her hand or his hand, and this, he immediately recognized it. And then they gave like a whole physics overview on this object. Mm-hmm. But in TV show, you can't do it. Like you want action scenes. So they just like, ditched whole complexity and make just shooting scene. That's it. But, you know, I think this might be a really nice segue on the second movie that I wanted to discuss, uh, Duna, Second mm. Dune, Second Dune, let me open it. And let's start with that specific topic, why I even brought it out. So first of all, amazing movie, highly recommend, we will discuss in details why, and uh, I love this movie, but, but, this is one of the movies where tons of the stuff that in the book was explained in details and they actually show it with a visual effect. Yeah. And I think the first episode, mm-hmm. oh, like first part was the same, right? Uh, true, yes, very, very close. And when I'm saying Duna, I, I meant both parts. They mm-hmm. are really, okay. they're really, really. It's just Duna 2 is still in the cinema, so so it's uh, fresh. But yeah, I, I'm, I meant both. And I love this type of the movie that don't assume that you're an idiot. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, but also, you know, like um, I watched first part. Mm-hmm. I watched this part, then immediately after that I read the book, and then immediately after I watched it again. I was surprising how they did really good balance. Like for people who read the book, they show a lot of small details like that you can like understand, especially like when you read the book, you appreciate this. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, if you never read the book and you can miss these details in a movie, it doesn't really make movie bad. Like because it tried like a good balance. Oh, okay, you skip this detail, you don't really get the reference, but it's fine. It doesn't really affect anything else. Uh, but when you watch it after book, that's really really interesting to see. That makes sense, and I actually would agree with you. Um, and there was several several parts. I started rereading the books many years ago. I read it. I scan it this time, and now I'm properly releasing. And by the way, on Audible, this is a properly. Uh, converted to audio format book with many different voices so it's more like a play than than the actual audio book highly nice. recommend um, you know I just noticed the IMDB of the second part is much higher so second part is 8.8 maybe it's just because it's fresh but it's not that fresh so it should already uh, have some uh, uh, some um, What's the current saying when 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 it's correction? Some correction. Uh, I think maybe correction happens when it released on DVD and like to broader audience. Like because in movie people go who really want to watch it, and a lot of people who go to movie it's the same people who watch like first episode, right? like first part. And correction will happen when it's released on DVD on streaming. Everyone watch it like. Maybe, uh, maybe. I'm a little bit skeptical because, from my experience, the biggest amount of feed, of uh, of reviews actually happens after the after it enters the movie. Yes, it will be on DVD, and the biggest correction that I remember was hap- usually happens in between preview before it hits the movie and after it hits the movie. I have seen so many things that on preview was higher up than went down, and vice versa. Um, but we'll see. Uh, we have 8.8, we now have this uh, on the recording. Uh, okay, give a guess. My guess, no less than 8.5. That will be the final rate. Easily. I, I think I'm more. 8.8. 8. 
Okay. 8.7. 8.7. Okay. And the first one, 8.0. So, and I actually want to agree with that. Um, there is many things what I love in the second uh, part, especially that they no longer avoiding jihad topic because I think it's impossible. <laughs> like they, they try to avoid this, this similarity, which you can see in the books constantly everywhere. Uh, between uh, Islam religion and what's happening in the movie. And here, they just gave up. <laughs> They're no longer trying to avoid this topic. And they even call it how it should be from the book, the holy war that happens in the end. And they think oh, yeah, the holy war has started. Uh, have you seen an old movie called Lawrence of Arabia? Oh, Jesus, I wanted to get... A, a, I, I just want to get a sip of wine and now I have to Google it. What What's the name? <laughs> Uh, Lawrence with W of Arabia. L yeah, Lawrence. Uh, I'm Arabia. sure it will suggest the current mm -hmm. name. Okay, no, I have not seen the movie. I feel like there's like, a lot of intersection between this story and uh, Dune. I'm not sure, like, probably Dune after, maybe somehow, you know, related to this story. But it's, it's similar, about guy from Britain who, you know, like, get into war between Turkey and Britain, and he tried to unite all Arabic uh, clans. Uh, who are actually hostile to each other. It's very similar to set up in, uh, in Dune. And this is also based on the book? Probably. <laughs> I didn't read the book. <laughs> But you have watched the, the, the movie. 1962. Yeah, was... How old are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I haven't watched it on release. I actually, you know, like, funny thing, I watched this movie after um, Alien Prometheus movie. Mm. Remember, like, the guy, like, a key, not cyborg, but a robot guy, he was watching this movie, actually. He was, like, making quotes from that movie. Hmm. Uh, man, Prometheus got seven. I would not expect. I, I honestly thought six is the maximum from Alien Prometheus. I don't know. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, besides, like, uh, people who get rid of their helmets and, you know, on another planet. There is so many things that you should say after besides, <laughs> but yeah, sure. Um, yeah, it was... I think, uh, I, think uh, I just was very excited to see these aliens, like not aliens, aliens, but aliens who created everything, engineers. I agree with you. There was so much potential, so much potential for the movie. Yes. And, uh, you know, that's how they they fucking with your expectations. This is exactly how they they taking something so precious to you and creating so shitty like this. That's uh, it's, uh, your expectations are, are your problem, you know? <laughs> <laughs> True. If you have low expectations, like everything amazes you. That's what I'm trying to do with movies. <laughs> <laughs> but looks like this is this is you know it feels like uh, in in investment you're you're searching the places that priced incorrectly they price higher than the market or lower than the market so looks like the people in the movie industry they're trying to find topics that already priced high with expectations of the people so they can create so shitty film about this that they're still going to get high MDB just because of the expectations were so high. Uh, no, I think you still need to at least have decent movie because actually if you like make really bad movie it will backfire like, people will dislike it and bomb your review and do a lot of like noise about it which may also boost the uh, sales I don't know <laughs> um you know let's see was Prometheus uh flip because I actually think that it probably was uh that flip is enough uh i think it was from the perspective of the uh, of the um, uh, box office i uh, box office uh flop okay flop not the flip flop um uh, okay. on Vika somewhere like how much it got box office success of from house okay all right i withdraw my my complaint by the way dune uh, duna second also had such a success in box, box office that they're already creating the third one It's already in the making. Uh, that's why I restart reading the books. I want to refresh what happens after the Holy War starts. Yeah, I really said that uh, Dungeons and Dragons didn't get a good box office. I really like. I really hope they will continue making it. But maybe, maybe someday. But to be fair, um, Dungeon and Dragons is like Disco Elysium is Dungeon and Dragons. That was a, <laughs> that was a play of Dungeon and Dragons. You can you can literally create almost anything and say that it was Dungeon and Dragons. No, no, I, I was talking about movie, not as a Dungeons and Dragons, like, um, 
like lore or is it just like movie itself i like its, it's principle like humor mm. and like you know trying to ring uh, how like um creates a sense of like you know pretty much like players playing a game in a strange strange ideas like you know not like a classic fantasy so i was really upset that it uh, didn't get uh, enough money to continue because they actually set a universe of characters you just like you can make movie and movie and movie you know uh you know where the sequels of this movie will keep coming for another decade on Pornhub <laughs> I'm sure that's <laughs> but yes uh, but they don't get IMDb rating yeah I don't know how to feel about that <laughs> yes <laughs> anyway um I think this is literally all I wanted to to chat with you, my friend, today. I don't have too many other topics. Do Oh, actually, I do have one, but first, a small one, really small one. But first, do you have anything that you want to share or touch base on? Nope. Uh, one that really one small thing is that I finished the book, uh, Checklist Manifesto. Uh, and uh, it's an interesting book. And uh, yeah, that's the one. It's an interesting book that i would not recommend <laughs> uh, and uh, this could have been a, a pamphlet at four pages pamphlet that you actually indeed paying for but if you are a productivity geek like i am you probably know everything already and this book is effectively stating here is a two type of checklist and okay. if you'll use them everywhere in your life your life will be better and then the rest of the books is uh, examples. <laughs> but what type of checklist? Uh, oh, okay. So there is two checklists. Uh, one is uh, do checklist when you're literally taking checklists and doing that. And one uh, verify checklist when you're doing things and then you're opening checklists and verifying if you have not forgot anything. Uh, they are actually a little bit different um, uh, in nature, but overall. Okay. Now mm -hmm. I need examples. So, okay. Uh, washing dishes is it like first checklist or second checklist because i may forget to wash dishes that uh, depends on the level of autonomicity you want to have for example if you are packing things to work mm -hmm. and you overall good with this and you yeah. obviously packing different things each day but you want to be sure that you packed the most important things keys laptop and something mm -hmm. that would be verify checklist because you don't know what you will be packing up front, so you cannot create do checklist at all. Mm -hmm. But you can have a verified checklist to make sure that you have not forgot these three or four items. Okay. But another thing is where you can actually outline all the steps up front, and you need to be sure that you're actually doing them in the right sequence and you don't forgetting right there the steps, it would be do mm -hmm. checklist. And the, usually the best practice is to have verified checklists because they give you more, more autonomicity, more creative work. Because in, in the end of the day, the goal is not to replace you with a monkey. The goal is to help you to make sure that you're not forgetting something. Um, so, yeah. You know, like mm -hmm. the main thing usually, um, at least for me, again, I don't know other people, but for me, the most, like the hardest task to keep in mind is at once that spans across time that has a some final uh condition like when they're done but they didn't have a date um often it's like something involved other people you know like okay i need to you know like to go and meet this person i don't know when and i know like how much time it takes or i need to tax is probably wrong example but um we'll say for me it's like i need to um for my daughter, I need to get her in a swimming school. The problem right now, swimming school schedule is closed and I can't really go and book it and forget about this. So in some future, I need to do it. I don't know when. Mm -hmm. And I don't. I need not to forget about it because I don't want to like, you know, forget and then it's, it's gone. But in some future, I need to do it. And there's like, it's like, once I've done it, it's, it's done. And things like this really, like, was really hard to track for me because I didn't know, like, okay, checklist doesn't really work because, okay, otherwise you get, like, a, many items that you, like, watch every day and, like, how do you know, like, which one to watch now or not? So it's it's a bit a bit harder. Um, one way I try to solve it, uh, I haven't, uh, I use Obsidian for my notes. Mm -hmm. 
And for many things in future, especially like, okay, I don't need to write your, like, um, to get here in a school like today. I'll probably do it like in the next month and start. I need to try. So I write a date and then I have a plugin that collects all future dates and show me, okay, what's next in the next like multiple years. So I can go like and skim only a few parts because it's usually was like a few weeks, months and ignore the rest of it. You know, first of all, this book will not help you with this at all. This is like literally uh, the information that I show, uh, shared you is literally the, the, the only usable. The rest is really good examples. And I actually, mm -hmm. uh, and examples from the industry, like flying airplanes or, 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 or uh, treating people. But I'm a productivity geek and uh, I know the problems I described really, really well. And you already solving, have solution for you, for yourself. This is good. I would, I would share my to-do list, of, but cannot because there's so many information that I cannot share with unfortunately mm -hmm. our listeners uh, but the general solution first of all there is the first thing that you need to have is a to-do list that you trust and you look into looks like you have that and the second is very simple is uh, having a system that allows you at some point in the future to look in this task for me I would create a task um, uh, what was not with a daughter in a swimming school, but there was a previous example, but you, oh, you said you need something from someone in the future. I will yeah. create a task two months from now to double check uh, on the next steps. And you know, mm -hmm. in the project... I think it's mm -hmm. pretty much the same what I'm doing. It's just like I'm doing it in the form of notes, just like in a free form. But yeah, it's, it's similar. Yeah, the, the, the key part that you actually doing, but many people do not, is to have list where you look at. Mm. So I have like pretty much like a plugin which shows me like everything in like one list and I usually just open like every few days because I know it's like important. Makes sense. Obviously a good mm -hmm. idea like to, to, okay, now you give me like another idea about improving my plugin to, to show me something. Is there anything like that will be, I will need to do in next week. <laughs> so yeah. if, it's, if, if there's no mark, I can ignore it. Uh, you know, uh, I have a completely extreme uh, version of that, uh, that uh, I'm sharing with people who would be willing to try, but I develop a habit of not doing anything unless it's in the list. So what I mean by this is that even if I get paged during the night, the first thing that I would do, I would open my to-do list, I would open the project, and I will start collecting data there of everything that I'm observing. Okay, I got page, here is a link for Seth, here is the next step, figure out what's going on, I create the next step, now I'm going to figure out what's going on, updating my to-do list with the data that I that I learning as I go. I'm doing pretty much the same, but, but because I forget everything like in five minutes. Same here, <laughs> same. The only downside for this, and this is actually proven by the research, the people who do do that, they start forgetting even more. Because, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine you're not training your brain. But I, I'm, I'm really like, over years, like I grow so much information that I need to remember and like finding a way that I can, okay, offload it to tools is really helping me. Um, I hope like I will not forget some things, at least like when I read books or something fundamental, I still like have a good habit to remember them. You know, there is this movement that called, uh, that has a name Second Brain. Yeah, that's what I'm pretty much doing with uh, with Obsidian, like writing everything down, link everything, so I can always go and like to see things. But there is a course about this from the guy that introduced <laughs> that the, the 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 meaning. So the guy that actually, and I have a real friends of mine who actually have took it. But I mean, it's not a new concept. Like, remember, like, was Zettel Kasten, like, at the way you, I think, because Zettel Kasten was some German guy who was creating encyclopedia, create, came up with a way to store all his knowledge in uh, paper cards. Some people actually employ it right now in the digital world. I, I tr like, I look at it, find it too complex for myself, but again, it's like not very new idea. Hmm. The idea might not be new, but the actual term second brain as a formalization of methodic was introduced by this guy. And he ran a training that from the moment he introduced the definition was uh, costing more and more and more and more and more. <laughs> Almost each year he would be rising the price. And uh, honestly, there is nothing 
secret there like you you can probably already learn everything that that is there yourself but um you know um what i'm i'm thinking how to describe this you know when you're taking a book about something that you're already using like c plus plus or, or go mm -hmm. you're reading it and you know 80 to 90 percent of the stuff so it's boring but those 10 percent that are left are making you much better programmer or developer or or a person or whatever mm -hmm. So I kind of in that space in productivity, like 90% of the stuff that I usually they would tell you in the productivity course, I probably already know. And I'm sure 90% from this course I already will know. But those 10%, those 10%. Can they just, for this money, can they just extract and give you 10% without going through all course? If, if either of us would know, <laughs> which 10% of these, I'm pretty sure they would be on you know, the price that $100 will only give you 10%, but how they could know which 10% to give. Um, anyway, I think we're precisely at one hour. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, that was a really, really good discussion. I agree with you. And uh, dear listeners, we have an interesting experiment, so to speak. So we will try to introduce the rotation between us, where, where each of us will have a main topic to to come and prepare for the discussion. That's all I want to say. <laughs> That's just the whole experiment. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, for now, we're aiming Dima to be the next, uh, the next anchor. Uh, let's have a quick, very minor discussion right now with live in chat. What do you think about the anchor also doing the, uh, the intro to the podcast? Mm, I may try it, <laughs> but maybe Maybe next time, maybe after. We'll see. Okay. I don't okay. mind. Uh, with that, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming up. We have 19 people right now. It's uh, far from the record, but yes, the audience was growing. Thank you, everyone, for coming, for listening to us. Have an amazing rest of the weekend, and I will talk to you same time, same place next week. Bye-bye. See, see you. Okay, let me stop live just one second. Mm.